When I was born, I weighed three pounds and five ounces. I was so small I could fit in the palm of my dad's hand. Initially, I wasn't supposed to last the night. Then it was a week, then it was a month, then it was a year. I'm 27 years old. When I was about eight or nine, <laughs> thank you. When I was about eight or nine, roughly the age in this photo, I remember talking to my mom on the way back from Boy Scout camp and I said, I'm different. I'm different than the other kids. There are things I do that they don't do. There are things they do that I can't do. For me, this was important because it was the first time that I openly acknowledged my disability. I was born with cerebral palsy, or CP. And what that is, is a disability that affects your range of motion, it can affect your ability to talk and communicate, it absolutely affects the way I get around. So let's talk about getting around. Take something every place, every day. Like, how did you get here today? For many of you, you got in your car, you drove over. That was pretty standard fare. At most, you had to deal with getting gas, some light traffic, or maybe you had to pick music. My journey here would rival the Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> From the first moment that I get outside my door, I have to go down a ramp, turn around, come back, and close a door in what I call the most stressful 43 seconds of my day because I have an alarm system. So if that alarm goes off, I have to do it all over. <laughs> so after that's done, it's up to my neighbors. How close did they park today? How close are they to the curb? Can I get around their cars with no issues? In this case, when we shot this, I was fine. But the potential is always there to where we'd have to go around their cars. And you see how little room I have on that sidewalk. So once I get around there, I have to be in a bike lane. The thing with bikes and bike lanes are they're designed for bikes. Spoiler alert, I'm not a bike. <laughs> so anytime I'm in a bike lane, it's dangerous. You can see how fast that car is going. And eventually you'll see another one and you'll see how close I am to it. Sorry, mom, I know you worry. I use this bike lane because both curbs leading on this street are inaccessible. I don't have a choice. If they swerve, I don't have the ability to get out of the way as quickly as I should. I don't have the momentum or the agility to move like I should. After I do with that, I have to get back on the street. And as you can see, this sidewalk is cracked. And these cracks can lead to damage to the chair and other issues. My wheelchair costs $16,000. So it's not cheap. From then, I have to cross the street. And in this case, I had the right of way, but a, decide, a driver decided to go without my knowing. So I had to deal with getting there. And again, here I am in the street. This street is anywhere from 25 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour. There's no sidewalk that I can use because of a lack of curbs and a lack of accessibility. So I have to be in the street, mere feet from cars. No bike lanes here either. A lot of times, I'm not gonna be able to see over the cars because I'm a full foot lower than most cars. So as you can see here, I have to use parked cars as shields. Literally, I have to look through a back window of a car to look through the front window and see what's coming because I can't see around it. So I have to trust and understand where I am in relation to other cars and go on blind faith. So let's talk about rain for a second. Today it's not raining, and that was great. When we shot this, it rained unexpectedly. That's not just an issue. That's a danger. Because the physical act of holding an umbrella gets me tired, 
and I have to deal with that umbrella. It limits my vision and limits my ability to see from a 360 view to a 180 or less. Not only that, there are trash cans. That's something every day. Those aren't major obstructions. They're just there. And if you see how high the street walk, the sidewalk is, it's unusable. So I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of work just to get here. Before we get into why it's worth it, I want to talk about why it's not. Number one, it's dangerous. Clearly, there are issues that could lead to me getting hurt, getting run over, even killed. Not only that, but I don't have to do anything. I'm one of the millions of Americans who get Social Security. I could take that money from the government, which replenishes on the third Wednesday of every month, without fail, and say that's it. I don't have to try, I don't have to go outside, I don't have to live. But that's not enough. I choose to do more because I want more for myself and I want to be more in my life. And that's not something I came up with one day and just said, I'm going to be an advocate. I can pinpoint the exact moment when that happened. This is a post. This is a street light. It's in the middle of a sidewalk. I've seen this street light in the middle of a sidewalk every day. And one day I took a picture. I was on the way to lunch with my parents, so I snapped a quick picture and I said, I'll deal with it later. Like many millennials, after lunch, I went on Facebook and I started a page. That page grew to get my message out there, to give me the opportunity to share why these issues exist, until the point where I was meeting with the right people to make real change. I eventually was able to be appointed to a committee, which I now chair, and we have the opportunity to make improvements for not just myself, but for others in our community who have similar challenges. So I've heard that I go too fast from my mom, from strangers on the street, even Pokemon Go. <laughs> I was playing in my chair one day and it registered me as a car. <laughs> the average rate of speed for my chair is anywhere from two and a half to five miles an hour. If you consider that as a car, it's not that fast. But from a pedestrian standpoint, that is a lot faster. I have to go fast to keep up with cars and things in the street. So yeah, I go fast. But I also go fast on a metaphoric standpoint. So much of what I do in advocacy is education. If you're not in a chair and you don't deal with the issues I deal with every day, then you don't know they exist. Anytime I do advocacy work, I have to educate someone who doesn't deal with what I deal with on where these issues are and why they exist. The most important time that I've done advocacy was my first time talking to the city council. I went in as a college student who, did this, who does this part-time, never done anything like this before. I was nervous. I was fighting for accessibility, reform, and improvements in my downtown area. I got up, I did my speech, and I got showered with praise from council members saying how brave I was for doing what I was doing and how important it was that I was bringing a voice to this. And then another council member decided to speak. He looked at me and he looked at a member of my committee who was there who also happens to be in a chair. And he said, I better not see you two racing down the halls after this is over. In that moment, the wind was out of my sails. There was no reason to go on. There was no reason to fight unnecessarily. There was no reason to continue my efforts. But then I went home and thought about it and said, if I stop now, 
what was the what was the point of that first day that first week that first month that first year so instead I turn that into a call of action they say I go too fast I say you don't go fast enough to catch up with me so I'm not <laughs> sorry okay. so what do I want to leave you with here tonight if you're someone who wants to get involved, you don't have to be in a wheelchair to be a disability advocate. Just by starting a conversation, and just by saying these are issues, and looking around, and broadening your view, and looking for sidewalks with cracks, you're able to start a conversation and get the word out there. If you're someone who's in a chair and says, my voice isn't loud enough. My challenges prevent me from moving forward. I say, try to focus not on what you can't do, and instead, allow yourself to discover what you can. You may be able and find the strength that you have that you didn't think you did. Thank you.